If you've already watched our Completing the Squares Part 1 video, we invite you to learn more complicated examples of completing the squares. Let's bring ourselves back to a very basic example that we went through in our previous video, along with its solution. So, what would the correct answer be for this equation in the vertex form? Well, if you remember, we took this number that's being multiplied by x, and then we divided it by 2, and then squared that number to arrive upon a resulting number that we added and then immediately subtracted in order to get ourselves to that point where we complete the squares. And when we factored this part, we got x plus 3 squared minus 9 minus 1, which we then simplified to become this. Now, if you weren't able to get the correct answer, or if you weren't familiar with the steps that we just took, we recommend that you take a look at our part 1 for completing the squares video before you move on with this one. Otherwise, if you got the correct answer and this is very basic to you, then you shouldn't trip up with the next question, unless you're in a situation where you need to polish up on your fundamentals with fractions. So, how would we complete the squares for a question like this? Well, you should do the exact same thing as you did before. Take this number and divide it by 2 to get negative 17 over 16, and then square it to get 289 over 256. So there's our number. Now there's no need to freak out about this number. We just need to use it like we did with our easy example. Add and subtract the equation by that number. Now we can factor this part to get this. And we'd end up with y equals x minus 17 over 16 squared minus 289 over 256 plus, and if we convert 6 into a fraction with a denominator of 256, it would be 1536 over 256. So simplifying this would get us to the following. And that's it. So again, if you had difficulty with this, then we encourage you to visit our Fundamentals of Fractions video so that you would get more comfortable with dealing with fractions properly. Great, now let's learn to handle one more situation. What if from our standard form, our a was not equal to one? So far, all examples that we had been dealing with had an a that was equal to one in our standard form. But what if our a was equal to three instead, and we had an equation like so? How can we complete the squares for this? The first thing to do is to factor out the 3 from the entire polynomial so that we can emulate an equation in the form that we're used to. What we'd get is 3 bracketed x squared plus 2 over 3x plus 7 over 3. Okay, from here on, let's treat what's inside the brackets like a normal process of completing the squares. We take this number and then we divide it by 2 to get 2 over 6, and then square it to get 4 over 36. We know that that's the same as 1 over 9, so let's simplify it right now, and use this number to add and subtract in our equation. Awesome! And we know we can factor this part now as a perfect square trinomial to get the following. Alright, let's change this to 21 over 9 so they have the same denominator, in which we can now simplify this to get plus 20 over 9. Great, and now we have one more step to go. Remember, our vertex form looks like this. So whatever is outside of this part being squared needs to be completely outside of the brackets. Right now, everything is being multiplied by 3 still. And if you remember, we factored out this 3 as our first step. So let's undo that by distributing the multiplication of 3 to both here and here. What we get is 3 times bracketed x plus 2 over 6 squared, which we don't simplify any further. And then we get 3 times 20 over 9, 
which can be simplified down to 20 over 3. Also, if you noticed, we can simplify that 2 over 6 in the brackets down to 1 over 3. So let's just do that. Great! So here's our answer after completing the square. So again, if you carefully go over these steps, you'll be able to solve other questions with an a that is not equal to 1. Just remember to start by factoring out the a first, and then solving everything as you would do it normally. And then go ahead and distribute the multiplication of a back to the equation, and then you've got yourself the equivalent vertex form. Great, so that's the end of this video, and until next time, have a good one.